What is up guys? Have you seen this video? Now you've either seen this and you're tired of looking at it, but that's just wild, right? That thing just crushed that. Today, we are going to be getting this crusty Ranger going. I didn't buy much over the weekend, except for, I did buy a another 2017 Sportsman 450. Uh, I bought that for 1200 bucks. I finished up the other blue Sportsman 450 we had in the shop. It's also a 2017. Uh, we took that out riding this weekend. The front storage box already got broken off of it. My fault, didn't buy the little cord. And uh, besides that, I bought a clapped out John Deere and a clapped out mule at auction. And I have no idea why I bought them, but I bought them. But speaking of parts, this is everything we got going for this guy here today. New air filter, seat covers. Uh, both of those are brake calipers. I'm missing one rear for sure. So I'm probably just gonna swap both rear calipers out. Possibly need the front, we'll see. Battery, oil filter, change the oil out on it. New front master, headlight harness. There's some parts that were in here and I don't know if they're necessary, but we're gonna keep those back here just in case. This rear brake line on the left rear wheel is gone. New fuel pump, this is a, I hope this works out because you can't find fuel pumps for this anymore. This one looks the same and I'm hoping everything works, all the connections fit. It should still, I mean, it's still a 500, so it's still fill fit. Um, but this model in particular, this is an 08, 07, I, I don't remember at this point, did not come with a fuel level gauge. So I'm thinking I'm gonna cut this plug off, splice the plug from the old pump on, and call it good. Got a few used parts we gotta put on. Uh, this tailgate should be fine, but the latches are bad and the Rear tail light harness is trash. This here is some stuff that I had. I thought they're pretty cool. This is a soft top and this is a soft uh, plexiglass. I don't, not plexiglass. This is a soft back window to go right across the back back here. And since I have them, I figured I'd install them. Two brand new front axles. And there's probably more that I'm forgetting. Um, I know we gotta do something sorting out for the tires, but I'm gonna focus first on starting this thing up, getting it running and uh, potentially taking it for a spin real quick, maybe. Golly, this thing's crusty. Look at that tank. That's nasty. Look at that. So it looks like they're basically like the same pump. It's just this one has the full sen fuel sending unit on it and that one does not. Now, due to the fact that we can't press the brakes because that master's locked up, the only way to start this is by jumping the solenoid. There's a sensor within the front end on the brake system. Ooh, kind of sound like something just now. Hmm. I took the air filter out of it and let the air box lid off. I don't know how sensitive these EFI systems are. I'm gonna try that. Stick the air filter in there. I believe he told me, if I remember right, that this thing's been sitting since 2020. Let's try it again. The exhaust is full of water. That's what that water rushing sound is. I just noticed it start dumping right there. Well, this has been an interesting turn of events. I'll tell you what, these rain, these 500 Polaris engines are tanks though. I mean, doesn't matter. These things always seem to just, they'll run, they'll run. Uh, this, the X2 being, you know, frozen and I rode the hell out of that machine after I got it running. I couldn't find a single problem with it. 
And this thing here, I, I'm guessing he said a hurricane hit that year too. So I wonder if this thing got submerged. There's one and turn that pipe a little bit sideways and that will let it drain if it's full of water. Pipe's warm. Full of water. Was full of water. All right, let's try starting this thing again and seeing where it gets. Oh, check the oil first. Make sure the oil's not full of water. Nope. Looks bad, but not wet with water. I still hear the water. And now I know why. This noise that I was hearing that was so loud, it's not from the exhaust. It's echoing out of this. That water's in that pipe. It was never in the exhaust. We're pumping it in. That's not good. I'm gonna have to try to dry this filter out because I don't have another one with me. All right, there is a boot right here. And this is where it sucks water from up there into the air box. And it definitely had water in it. Interesting. I wonder how I could dry that out. not stupid if it works right and just shot out all that water that's wild cool well that means we're probably good to go there on that aspect I'll probably leave that sit open for a bit try to dry it out some more but it just shouldn't be too bad I know I'm probably gonna have to reorder a new air filter that thing's completely saturated all right we're gonna give it another whirl I want to hear this thing run at this point <laughs> I'm just gonna let this thing sit here and idle for a few minutes. Make sure to see if there's anything that's like wet, let it dry itself out. Let the engine actually get to operating temperature. So after it sat here for a few minutes and run, it's running great. Dirt dauber nest falling out of like literally everywhere, but. But she sounds good. Here's something I did not notice. So, I don't know. Might have to replace that too. I actually think I might have one of those, so we'll see if that frees up enough to, to be worthy. This thing needs so much work. It's one of those things you buy it and it's like, yeah, I can fix that, it's no biggie. And I'm like, man, but I already bought it, so might as well get to it. So I guess time to get started on these axles. This whole thing looks like that axle is about to not want to come out of here. That does not want to come off there. Got it. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace all four calipers on this thing. All right, now I can guarantee you this axle is not gonna come out nice and smooth. Well, not necessarily a good sign, but I went to pull the axle, broke the whole thing. That thing's not moving at all. So I'm gonna hook up my other tool to it and hopefully that'll get it out. That tool usually gets it out.
Oh, I got myself inside the knee. Direct hit. Damn, that stings. Right there, in that joint too. Never done that before. I got it. I might've took out my knee in the process, but uh, I got it. My knee stings just a tad. That thing was in there. And like normally these axles, like you pop that, once that clip comes out, you're good to go. Nah, this one fought the whole way out. Lots of PB blaster, that's what did it. Now we just gotta put all this back together. And uh, shouldn't be too bad. Nah, maybe all right. So it turns out that the banjo bolts and all that's just different. So can't use those other calipers on here. I will have to buy replacement calipers, which is a bummer. I was hoping to get this thing done and kind of like out of here today, but it looks like that's not in the forecast. We'll go ahead and knock this out and then uh, work my way back. I just realized I forgot to order rear axles. So I'm probably gonna have to do that too. All right, so we are back and had some issues. I went to test drive it and I was going to do some sketchy shit and drive it with no brakes. Um, <laughs> but lo and behold, it wouldn't start. All the times I started it ran just fine. All of a sudden I completely lost spark and completely lost something else. I forgot what it was. Anyway, turns out those two things are connected by one relay. And like I said, I don't remember what they were. I just decided to read through the manual and I found them. So I had to buy this little $25 relay. And I don't know if this is something I probably could have got it. O'Reilly's, AutoZone, any of those. Oh well. And I did end up robbing the battery for something else while I waited on that to come in. As of right now, should I be able to be done with this shortly? I'm waiting on a new rear hub, new rear knuckle, because the one that's on here is wrong. Um, I don't know what year model it is from, but the mounting space between that and that are much wider than that one. Already got the new axles on here. Already got the new front calipers on here. It's that and clean it up, button it up, and it'll be good to go. And this thing can get out of the shop. And hopefully I got a nice clean other Red Ranger in here tomorrow. I have been out scoring some stuff though. I bought this. This is gonna be a donor bike. It just, it needs too much. Bought this right here for 600 and then another like 10 machines half of the stuff i took to auction and the other half it's still sitting in the back where i'm gonna have to figure out what i'm gonna do with it so i'm gonna get this stuff put on and hopefully hopefully she'll start up so as i'm sitting here replacing the, the relay I remember finally the that relay actually controls the spark and the fuel pump that's what the other thing was i get forgetful but that's probably why that thing looks terrible. I end up cleaning out the contact point and let's see if she'll start. Fuel pumpy's working. Sweet. Tell you what, that's, that's like one of the best feelings. When it fires right up, you can hear it bust off. Mm. That's right, the wheels. So, managed to score these. These are, uh, Ranger wheels off of a newer model. These are 28s, so I hope it'll clear. This, uh, this should have like 25s on it, but I got those for a hundred bucks, so you can't beat that. I mean, where else are you gonna get wheels? And uh, what else we lacking? Still gotta put the top on, the tailgate, tailgate latches, tailgate harness, bleed the brakes. I gotta wait for that knuckle to come in, and this one will be good to go. So I did kinda test fit it on the other side. But it turns out the factory lug nuts will not work with those wheels. So I had to order some. No big deal. They still came in before the knuckle did. And I don't want to sell this thing with three calipers. Well, that's a bummer. Looks like we're not going to be able to run these wheels without wheel spacers. These lug nuts are barely even biting because there's not much stud left there. And like the first eight millimeters coming off of it is blank space. All right, after some issues, turns out that relay may not have been bad. It may have just been a bad connection all along because like it started that one time I went to start it to drive it out and nothing. I got sick of sitting here and jumping the solenoid because it kept like dying on me. 
So I decided I would go ahead and put the brakes on. I had already got the knuckle on. It just came in the same time I was having that issue. And she fires right up now. I ended up doing some dielectric glazing and recleaning those relay connections. Now we can ride it. So let's see. Things actually running really, really smooth. Sweet. Don't get me wrong, at this point I got more money in parts than I do in the machine, but. It's like driving an 18 wheeler. Steering wheel way up here. bit of a hill. Let's do low. For some reason this lights aren't working. I'm gonna have to figure that one out. Dang, I wonder how much gas I put in this thing. doing dang I wonder because we're on an incline now I wonder if it's not not getting enough gas we'll just go backwards out of here maybe Flat level ground. I no joke. Swore I had all the water out of there. Golly, these 500s are good machines, man. Hey, you learn something new every day. I did not expect to still have water in that pipe. I mean, I dried it out, and that thing's been sitting in the shop for like a week and a half now sitting there getting hot but I guess everybody makes mistakes I screwed up at least it didn't cost us the engine that's for sure because uh, I got way too much in this to be doing engine repairs so I finally finally got all of the water that was in the intake tube cleaned out and she is running fantastic now fires right up I ended up having to go get another shop vac and just sucked it all out and sucked a bunch of paper towels through and just let it run for a while. Now we're at the last of it. I gotta get the headlight dealt with. Headlights. Runs fantastic. As you can see, boom, there's another one. So I went out and bought this yesterday. I picked it up for a grand. The only reason I bought it is because it's actually a pretty nice looking unit. He was asking 2,500 for this thing. The motor is jacked up. And you know, when I got there, I'm glad that I didn't offer more because the seat base is broken. I'll end up having to replace the seat and he had swapped the tires out. Don't get me wrong. These AT489s, they're great for selling on these Rangers because it, that's what they came with from the factory. So I'm gonna end up pulling these wheels and tires and putting them on that because I never figured out what I was gonna do with the rears and the other tires, the wheels and tires I bought that wouldn't fit. What I'm gonna do with that is buy some wheel spacers for this unit here. But something to do with, he took it to a shop and they ran the stator bolt in too far, broke the case or something like that. I have not looked into it that much. This one needs all four axles too, probably some wheel bearings and such. I'll figure that out as I jack it up to swap the wheels out. But I'm gonna take the motor out of this here and drop it in that right there. And this should be worth about 3,000, 3,500 ish once I'm done. Anyway, I'm stripping a few things off of this for that just to get that thing ready to rip today and get it up for sale. They are identical units, both 2008 models, both fuel injected, but one looks significantly better than the other one. Side note, I've never had this happen. I know for a fact when I loaded that up, 
these cup holders were in it, they are no longer there. It was a three and a half hour trip home. I was looking at the YouTube analytics and it shows that only like 10% of y'all that watch these videos are subscribed. I'm really trying to hit 5,000 subscriber mark before the end of this year. So if you're watching this and you watch this channel a lot, hit that subscribe button, help me hit that 5,000 goal. Turns out I made a mistake. That hood, not hood, that roof and the back glass is not for this. It is for the next year model up. So it'd be 09 and up. I, I thought I looked it up. Turns out I did not. Whoops. Now let's just get this, these tires swapped over and get the headlights working and she's good to boogie. I think this thing will be worth 2,700. It is deer hunting season, so. All right, so it's done. This thing cleaned up all right. I mean, honestly, it looks a lot better than I expected it to in the end result. But, uh, I mean, it ain't perfect. It's all beat up Ranger, but I think, uh, I think it'll sell quick. We're wrapped up. On to the next one. Thanks for watching.